love Steve, but Steve knows that I'm bullying. Steve knows that I'm saying things or doing things that are hurting his heart. You can you can count these people that they go unchallenged because after all they care for you. And there's a lot of kind of bullying too. They can come in the form of cyberbullying. I'm doing it on social networking or Facebook or Twitter, using photos, remarks, inside punches. And I see that, I see that on Facebook all the time. I feel like I get on Facebook like, you know that was wrong, what you said. You know what you were saying, and I know what you were doing. I mean, you see people, they do that. They'll put something on Facebook and say, you know for who. They'll say that. Or they'll say something. And, 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 and let me tell you something, people ain't dumb, right? This is a, it's a generation of people are smart. And, or they put a picture, they took something up, and, and they think that people don't know. And these are what bullies do. They come in as a friend. They, they even click you as a friend. And I like you as a friend. But then they shoot things on your Facebook. But they do social networking. These bullies love to wait to post online. I mean, I remember I did a picture. And Charles remembers one time. I put a picture of a guy sitting on, on a computer with just computers all around him. And I, like, he was like the Facebook command center or something. And there's people just waiting. Just, just waiting just to, to go off on people like that. And they have all these screens. And they're just ready for anything to go off. And these kind of these kind of bullies you have to understand, they, they come in the form of Facebook. They come in the form of certain things. And, and it's real important, you guys, that we have to understand that God looks at our motives. Because you can post things on Facebook. First of all, I don't think Facebook should be a place you talk about your husband and wife. Don't do that. It's scandalous. You shouldn't do that at all. It, it makes you look just like a Christian that has no class when you talk about your husband. Oh, my husband's being in church today. And you go to church, you teach classes, you do this, you do that. Just makes it look weird if I write back, like you should not call yourself a Christian. It just makes you look in no class. But it's very important that we look at this stuff. And you're seeing more of this, more of this nowadays where people are bullying people. And these bullies love to wait and post online. But also they use texts and numerous ones. They cruel, uh, uh, they, they tease, they harass, they textbook, they use Facebook, they use Twitter. They do all these things. They badger, they intimidate people. They love to control people. They love to control emotions. They say things that only you would know and so forth. And all I'm trying to say is that we always have to look at the motive. Where God looks at our hearts, God looks at certain things. If the devil can't come inside here, and I always tell people, if the devil can't get you with a drug, he'll get you with a hug. He always will. And it's very important that we understand that the bullies come in, even in the house of God, they come in forms of friends. They come in forms of certain things. And this is why it's important even for our children, because this builds depression in people. This makes people get upset, get mad, and get hurt. And this is why it's so important that we understand that even our kids, their computers should be in a way where you can see what's going on. Hey, is anybody bullying you today? Is anybody going off today? Hey, let me read your Texas. Hey, what's going on? And there's more and more kids killing themselves. There's more and more people that don't want to go to church and so forth. I don't want to go. There's a bully there and so forth. And this is why for our children, even their computers should always be in the front room. But many family members that they're saying can be backdoor bullies too. There's many family members that, like I said, I grew up in a house where nobody nobody stopped the bullies. If you had a, if you lived in my house and if you had a problem with somebody, my mom would say, take it outside. Take it outside and go for it. So what happens you take it outside every day? What happens every time you take a fight outside or you fight outside? What begins to happen when you're 18, 19 years old, you get two grown men fighting, guess what? Now you've got to call the police. Now you can't stop nothing. And it really is something that arrives. So we're 18, 19, 20 year old men fighting in the front yard. You can't break 20 year old men apart. And now it becomes, it's not a little problem no more, but now it's a huge problem. And this is where it's so important that we understand that even in our families, we have to look at, is there bullies going on? Is there people that are fighting? And it also happens in the church of God. Well, how does it happen in the church of God? Ongoing ugly remarks, smirks, sarcasm, right? You ever see like that? Smirks, sarcasm in the house of God. Not only that, but humor, cruel humor, aiming at someone's weakness, moves or joking to attack. Bullies justify their behavior by saying, man, you're just too sensitive. Or you know what, or why don't you toughen up? Or you know, I was just kidding. Just kidding. That's it. Huh. And, and they do that. And that's what a lot of people do, huh? And if, and, if you, and if you tell them anything, they complain. Or they say, listen, you're getting too defensive. Or maybe, you know, you can't, can't you take a little joke? Hey, listen, get over it already. And you got to understand what bullying is. you got to understand that sometimes, even in the house of God, I see it sometimes. 
that I'm looking like the smirks or the faces or the looks and understand other people see that too but what it does it destroys your credibility for who you are being a man of God or being a woman of God and if you if, and if you tell them anything they say oh you're being too de defensive or you can't you take a little joke or why don't you get over it already listen when someone says they had enough they mean they had enough and it's very important we understand also, you have to understand some words that can literally show us bullying is when people, when you, when you know the words that can show you that people are bullying, when someone says stop or knock it off, hey, or listen, I don't deserve that, I don't want you to say that or do that, and even repeating uh, what the bully says sometimes, sometimes you got to repeat, like, listen, I don't like you to say that, I don't like you to do this at all, I don't like you going this way at all. I mean, you could ignore bullies, let me tell you something, you could ignore bullies, but many times you can't. Many times you can't ignore them. Right? Many sometimes you're going to have to confront them. Even some families pick on individuals. And I tell you what, when this is where, as a parent, you have to tell people, listen, you need to stop all this. In my house, there's no bullying at all. And we don't, I, I, don't, I can't stand bullying. So listen, you don't do that at all. So I don't want my kids learning that kind of stuff when they get older at all. Not only that, but you have to uh, know also that you, if you don't stop that inside your life or stop it in your family or you stop it in the church, what begins to happen, it makes conflict. What begins to happen, you start uh, making people feel like, you know, well, I'm not going to do nothing. You make people withdraw. And it's very, very important that we understand this today. The backdoor bullies at work or church is wild because they act like a friend at times. They can act like your worst enemy. Backyard bullies, they talk behind your back. They make jokes about you with others. They hug everyone else. Hi, just say I promise to you. Hi, Anthony. Hi, Naomi. Hi, Sandra. <laughs> and they're going to do that. They hug everybody else and go, Hi, Naomi. Hi, and it's dog Steve. I'll go, Hi, Anthony. Hi, Shamar. Hi, Naomi. Hi, Sandra. <laughs> And, and they're, they're backdooring what they're doing. They're, they're backdooring certain things. And it sounds funny, but think about Steve. Think about Steve saying, I know what you're doing. Think about Steve like, oh my gosh. Now think about that person out there on the pulpit talking about, God loves you. Think about if I did that to Steve and I said, you know you guys, we've got to learn to love God. And we got to understand that God loves us. What is Steve thinking? You're a liar, man. You know, how dare you sit there and, and you're, you're so hypocritical and you're fake. And think about how much it hurts to you. Think about Steve talking to God and saying, man, God, why is he like that for? Why is he doing that for? I didn't do nothing to him. Think about when Steve goes home now. Man, you know, you see, I just, that's weird, that's weird. You see, I just said hi to you, hi to see Joe. And you see where you looked at me? And we don't understand that it destroys our credibility. It destroys who we are in God. And this is why backdoor bullies, when you look at the characters of a bad boy, they say hi to everyone, but, but, not, but not to you. And when they are with you, rather than disagree, they roll their eyes, they give big sighs, they mutter complaints about you, and leave the room when you come in. Now I say this because, listen, as the church of God begins to grow, and as us as individuals begin to grow, it's very important that God, we understand that God looks at our motives. God sees our heart. And this is where people can be destroying their own lives, where you can fool everybody else, but you're not going to never fool God. Right. You're not going to ever sit there and God's like, man, I know exactly what you're doing. And let me tell you something, when, when God knows exactly what you're doing, people know exactly what you're doing too. Let me ask you a question. Do you know if somebody's doing that in your life? Do you know? Lift your hand, you know. Sometimes. Sometimes, okay. Well, people do know. Now, think about the person that's right there, and I just did that, and they just see me like, did you see that? Did you see that? He? he always does that. Do you see that? And this is where the devil starts coming in. This is where the devil starts lying to people. This is where the devil starts saying that. But all of a sudden now, I just lost my character. I just lost a lot of things in, some, in somebody's eyes. And this is why it's so important that we understand bullies begin to ruin people's lives. The backdoor bullies use their passive aggressive behaviors in subtle ways. They do jobs and, and, and they'll do jobs and they do the jobs they want to do, but they never help up the performance of other people. And this is what backdoor bullies do. They're like, I'm not going to help you out. Don't get me wrong. I'll do other things, but I'm not going to go help you or go help you to advance you at all. And again, God lets us the whole part about they show up late or they show up make your work harder. People will try to get these bullies are trying to get personal life and business with you. They try to make themselves more friendly to you so you can be more vulnerable to them. And, and this is what backdoor bullies do. They at times are saying, you know, I just want to let you know, I, 
I really love you, I care for you, and I, I love you with all my heart. And you think, oh, big man, thank you, Jesus, you answered prayer. You know what I mean? You're thinking that. And all the reason why they're not doing that, they're just making you more vulnerable. They're making you like to the point where then all of a sudden they hit you again. And this is what makes people not trust people. So it makes people begin to get hurt by people. They pull you into inner conflict or work conflict. They act sincere. They act like they value your advice. But all reality, they don't value it at all. They twist your words. You see, backward bullies, they tell you they want to know you. They tell you they want. They tell you that I love you. But deep down inside, they have issues. Deep down inside, something's going on. They'll tell you they want to get to know you, but they have a problem with you. They say, listen, I want to understand about you. Backdoor bullies have a lot of drama. Can you ever see like drama? You see drama kings or drama queens? It's like some people just love drama. And sometimes you don't even gotta give them drama. I tell people, I don't want to make my trip, your trip's my trip. I'm not gonna make your trips mine at all. And I'm not getting into your drama at all. And there's people that like that kind of drama. There's people that want their trips to become your trips. Backdoor bullies love to assassinate your character. Backdoor bullies do all kinds of things. And let me tell you something, you can't confront someone if you, if you, if you think they owe them. Sometimes backdoor bullies, they'll do things for you. They'll buy you a gift here, they'll take out a dinner here, they'll do something for you there. Then you feel like you owe them something. And when you feel like you owe them something, you're never going to confront someone that they, you think they owe you. There's a lot of husbands and wives, well, you know, you're lucky I take care of you, you're lucky I do this, you're lucky I do that. So a wife sits there and says, I can't confront him because he owes me, and now I'm afraid he's going to leave me, and now I'm afraid he's going to do something. And now I'm afraid of this and afraid of that. I was talking to a guy just the other day, and I told him, listen, you have to make a choice. Well, if I confront and I do this, then my wife will leave me. I said, that's just going to leave me. She got you already. But if you can't confront that, you can't say nothing. That's sad. She got you like a bully. You got a wife. You got a girl wearing a skirt bullying you around. It's sad. You're going to have to stand up and say, enough's enough, I'm not doing this. This house is going to serve God. This house is going to glorify God. And vice versa, if a man's sitting there, and he's saying, well, if you do this, and I'm going to leave you do that, that's a bully there. I'm not saying to sit there and fight, but there has to be like, listen, enough's enough, you're breaking my heart. I cannot do this no more at all. You see, as I close today, Jesus dealt with bullies. And Pharisees were the biggest bullies inside of his life, and they were backdoor bullies. When you look at the scriptures here in Matthew 22, verse 15, and the Pharisees went and took counsel how to entangle him in his talk. And they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodian, Herodian saying, Teacher, they really say, Teacher, they call him Teacher, we know that you're true, that you teach the way of God truthfully, and care for no man, for you don't regard the position of man. And look at how they came at Jesus. They came to him as a backdoor bully. They said, Teacher, we know that you're a powerful man of God. We know that you don't care about man. Or you don't care. All you care about is the things of God. But they go on to tell him this. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay tax to Caesar?